Hey y'all, I'm Angie. Welcome to my channel where I do stuff. If you're new here, thank you for joining me. And if you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. In today's video, I'm going to make a fireplace screen using Dollar Tree products. And that's a wild ride, so you're not going to want to miss it. Um, I also have a couple of announcements I need to make. Everything you need to know about today's video will be in the description box below, including all my social media pages, my website, and all the products that I use today. And because this is a show, let's get started. These are some of the inspiration pictures I found online. And I was hoping for something kind of like this and less farmhouse, if that makes any sense. So the supplies I figured I would need is a square. Didn't end up using that. There was no need, I'll show you why. I got nine of these 11 by 14 frames from Dollar Tree, and that was the beginning of my mistakes. Uh, that was the first one. <laughs> um, but uh, I also got these um, wall hangers and I thought I might be able to use them on the back to uh, kind of prop it up straight once I got the screen done. I have not put those on. You know how sometimes you have an idea and you think it's a fantastic one and so you get everything you need to execute this fantastic plan and you get like no more than half an hour into it and you're like uh maybe making a mistake. Well, you're watching that happen in real time. These cheap frames are injection molded polystyrene and they come apart. So one of the things that kind of annoyed me about all this is literally after I bought these products, I came home and I got an alert notification on my phone that one of the historic hotels in town had replaced all of their windows and they were selling the antique ones. And had I not just spent like nine or ten dollars on all this stuff, I would have gone over there and picked one up. But I was like, no, I'm going to make this work because I just spent the money. And you know, it's Dollar Tree. You can't return the stuff. You can get store credit to use immediately, but I can't think of ten dollars worth of Dollar Tree stuff I want. So um, actually, I take that back. It was more than that because it's a dollar twenty-five now. Anyway. So yeah, I could have gotten a historical window and I didn't. And you'll have to let me know at the end if you think it was worth it. And so then you know how you get into a project about half an hour in and you know you screwed up almost immediately, but you just kind of double down and like keep going anyway because you realize it may be too late to start over. <laughs> That's exactly where we are with this, but I'm going to wait until the end to talk about all of the things I would have changed and everything that went wrong. But I am going to mention that right as I started this project, I got a notification on Facebook Marketplace that a very historic hotel in my town completely redid all their windows and they were selling all of the antique windows. I could have gotten one the correct size for $30. And because I already bought this stuff, I just kept going. Big mistake. So I already super glued all the glass in and now I'm going to take each individual frame and super glue them together. But remember how I said that these are injection molded polystyrene and that they're Dollar Tree frames? They're all bowed. After spending some time being mad at myself, I went and got the hot glue gun and I got some, uh, they're kind of like tongue depressors, but they're used for stirring quart size paint cans. Um, I got some of those stir sticks and just decided the best thing I could do is flip these puppies over and use those sticks um, as reinforcement on all of the frames. I ended up using a whole pack just for this but they cut with scissors really easy, so I was able to reinforce all of the different spots where the frames came together. If you're enjoying today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help support the channel and it lets me know how I'm doing. 
I also wanted to make the announcement that my Etsy store is out. They raised their fees again and that was enough for me. So I transferred everything over to my website, which you will find in the description box below. Um, I am also cleaning out a lot of duplicate items that I had. I'm cleaning out my closet. So a lot of my housewares, some antique stuff and clothing will be on my website for sale as well. Um, a lot of the rocks and petrified wood and other things that I find in my videos will be up for sale on my website as well. So if you're interested, go check that out. And the last thing is that the podcast is back. Um, it is still a work in progress. It is still evolving and developing. But um, after a hiatus that has been way too long, um, I have a couple of episodes in the hopper. And I believe the first one will be going up the day after you see this. So, um, and there will be an accompanying uh, YouTube channel for that as well. If you're one of those people who prefers to just turn on, you know, a podcast video while you're doing stuff and listen to it that way. So I'll do that as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know the, uh, the web address for the podcast is in the description box as well. So go check it out. My house is a rental, so I can't do a whole lot to it. Um, but the whole reason I wanted to do this in the first place is because I hate the like chain mail drapes that are in the front of the fireplace. It just catches dog hair so badly. So I figured this would be a better alternative. But as you can see, uh, you can see in between the frames and you can see the reinforcing sticks on the back from where the frames are bowed it this whole thing looks horrible and at this point i was getting ready to throw it out the back door and just not worry about it but um i thought you know i've already gone this far i'll see what i can do to salvage it So of course the only solution is to paint every single bit of natural colored wood uh, the stuff you can see between the bowed out frames as well as the stuff on the back that you can see through the glass. So what would I do differently? Um, this was a hot mess project from the start. Um, and so what happened, I'll explain to you how my, my train of thought got thrown off and why it went so bad. So when I first got all these frames, even in the store, I could tell they were bowed and they weren't perfectly square. And so I knew that was going to be a problem, but my idea was I was going to come home take the glass out of everything and spray paint them all. But the weather had been so bad for so many days in a row that I didn't get to spray paint anything. So when it came to the next part, I was like, oh, well, whatever. I'll just leave them like regular picture frame finish and I'll, I'll deal with it later. Um, and when I glued the glass in, um, I was like two frames in and I was like, why did I do that? Did I really just do that? Because what I should have done was left the glass out and glued the frames together and clamped the frames, like forced them to unbend themselves so that they were flat up against each other. Um, but I didn't do that. So because I didn't do the painting, I forgot to do the clamping and it was kind of like, whatever, now I'm kind of committed. So I have notes down here. If, if you see me looking off camera, that's why. Um, another thing I was thinking about doing was taking those stir sticks and making like a facade frame around the outside because one thing that's always bothered me about the Dollar Tree frame, either mirror or faux window projects, is that when you use picture frames, on the inside edges, you've got a double thickness of the frame, but on the outside, which should have like the largest perimeter thickness, it's just one you know, one width of frame around because you only have one edge. And so I think if I took stir sticks, like the ones that I glued to the back, 
and I mitered all four corners and then just glued them flat to the frame and then painted it. I think it would look pretty good. So I don't know. What do you think? I mean, what would you change? What would you do differently? Do you agree with any of my, you know, what I would do differently plans or what ideas did you have when you were watching the video and you saw it and you were thinking, what is she doing? You're doing it wrong. You should you know, whatever, tell me what you were thinking, because I can always either do this project again, I can change it, or I can just scrap the whole darn thing. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And here we go. Uh, I have to say y'all, um, this final, final product, I don't hate it. Um, you can see that there are a couple of spots where you can see light shining through where there are no wooden sticks. Um, on the frames but I mean that's an easy fix I mean for a $10 project um, you know I don't hate it it does exactly what it's supposed to do it keeps the dog hair out of the fireplace it allows me to see the candles uh, unobstructed basically um, and keeps the dogs safe from you know creating a barrier between that and the open flame I mean I'm pretty happy with it considering. Uh, do I wish I had gotten the window from the hotel instead? Absolutely. But this isn't terrible considering how much time and money I put into it. But now that you've heard what I would change and what I wish I'd done differently and you see the finished product, I really want to know your thoughts about this. Keeping in mind that it cost me like $10 and only like a day to do. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Well, y'all, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's mess of a video. And if you did, then I hope you'll consider subscribing because I would love to see you back here next week when I do more stuff. Bye.